Hey everybody, it's Mike and welcome to Chip Damage. And today is a very special day. That is because today is the release date of Resident Evil 8 Village. And I am very excited to be showing off and unboxing the Resident Evil 8 Village Collector's Edition here with you today. Yeah, this just arrived in the mail and I can't wait to share it with you guys. Um, as you know, if you've seen any of my other videos, I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. I was very much looking forward to this game. Resident Evil 7 in particular was one of my favorite games of the last generation, and I'm really hoping that Resident Evil can live up to it. So yes, like with the prior game, Resident Evil 7, as well as the remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 3, there was a limited collector's edition released in the United States exclusively through GameStop. Uh, and luckily I was able to get one of these on pre-order because they sold out within about a day. Yes, all versions. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I was able to get the PlayStation 4 version. Well, let me just mention, I am super happy that on the PlayStation 4, and hence the 5 through backwards compatibility, you were able to play all the numbered Resident Evils and Code Veronica. Like, 0 through 8 and Code Veronica all in one system, that's pretty awesome. I like re-releases. Some people have issues with how many versions of Resident Evil 4 and so on there are, but no, I love them. I'd like to have them on as many consoles as possible going forward. But without further ado, let's hop into what this bad boy is and let's see if it was worth the 220 US dollar asking price that it was. I'm sure it was, I'm sure as a fan I'll be happy, but hopefully by the end of this video, you'll see if that price tag is worth it for you. Um, and before I begin, if you like this video and you haven't seen my video on other Resident Evil Collector's Editions released throughout the years, please check that out. Uh, and without further ado, let's start with this bad boy, shall we? So uh, right off the bat, this is a heavy box. This has some good weight to it, but uh, let's get a good look at that. Yeah, that nice stylish design. And you know, I'll be talking about what I think about uh, the, the pre-release of this game as we go on, but let me just say like, the, the, uh, the Roman numeral eight in Village is fantastic. They did the same thing with seven in the Resident Evil logo itself. Um, officially, this game is not known as Resident Evil 8 Village. It's just Resident Evil Village. I think they're going away from numbers. Uh, I hate that. I want them to be proud of that number, show the lineage. Um, I don't want them to, you know, kind of change the names for newcomers. No, it's, it's eight. This is the eighth game in a long-running series. But yeah, let's look around the box a little bit more. You see some uh, tattered... What are these, like tickets and maps? Um, kind of hard to say what they are. They look, you know, like ruins of um, paper that you would find like on a billboard or something. And on the back, you get a nice picture of the contents uh, that we'll be going through in a moment. You know, of course, on the bottom, not much, just some serial number. And on the top, this is just odd. It's like a, a coin slot of some sort. Maybe that'll make more sense when I actually get into the game, or, or is that like a picture of a handle instead of an actual handle? Okay, why not? Um, you know, let, let's, uh, let's go into it, shall we? So, this cover seems, and this is a real unboxing, I've not gone through this yet, so bear with me if I have any issues uh, getting it open, but this is just a sleeve right here that slid off pretty easily. And what do we have here, shall we? Take a look. More stickers, more like, now I see what this kind of is. It might be a save box from the game or some type of uh, traveling, uh, like a, a suitcase of some sort. But yeah, it's definitely got the vibe of like a case. Uh, I'm not sure if this is an item box in the game or what. It's got latches, it's got like pictures of latches. Um, so yeah, I guess this is an item box. Kind of odd that they didn't just give you like a real box. They gave you like a cardboard box imitating an item box, whatever, okay, sure. I've heard in other countries for the prior Resident Evil's collector's editions, there have been like nicer boxes with handles and we just kind of get the short end of the stick here in the US, but hey, let's see what's inside, shall we? So there are some stickers, uh, so keeping it sealed. So let's use a box cutter, open that right up. And yeah, I'm really glad that I was able to get my hands on this. Like, um, GameStop exclusives in the United States, if you don't know, for the last couple of Resident Evils have sold out super fast. Um, and, you know, this was announced well before the pre-order window went up and I just kept checking to see uh, when it would go up. And by the time I checked, uh, by, by the time I actually saw it, the PlayStation 5 version had already sold out. And I don't mind that too much because I really want the content inside and you could play the PS4 on the PS5 version, so on and so forth. I would have taken any version. Uh, I just wanted the content inside, but yeah, this sold out within hours. So really glad that I got this. 
All right, so right when you open it up, it's got a nice smell to it. I love new game smell. Remember for my OG gamers out there, the smell of like an open case and like the manual. Yeah, I miss that, I miss manuals. Oh, they did one of my favorite things here. Let me tilt the camera, tilt this towards the camera. So as you can see, we have two cases. This is my favorite thing that uh, collector's editions can do. They seem to, they give you the regular game sealed. Um, you know, look at, if you guys uh, don't want to, if you guys want to see the cover, there it is, the regular cover. And you can tell it's a collector's edition version because it has the not for resale sticker. There's no skew on this. So that's great, but it looks like the steel book is separate, yes. So they give you two cases. Let's get a good look at the front and back of that. And the interior is empty except for the disc. So if you want to display either version, you don't miss out on the box with the info on it and you get this wonderful steel book. Let's see, I don't really know what this logo with like that deformed fetus in the center is but I'm sure it's gonna be important to the game. You got a nice spine right there, uh, it's saying Resident Evil Village kind of in shiny gold. Hopefully you can see that, but yeah, it gives you the option. You don't miss out on the original case. Maybe there have been cases where I don't like the Steelbook's art as much as the original case, but that's all you have for the collector's edition. And, or maybe you wanna keep the Steelbook looking nice and fresh, keep it in the box. Love when they give you both versions. Not every collector's ed edition does that. Thank you, Capcom. Let's see what all the other goodies we got in here. All right, so keeping, Oh, let's see, I believe this whole like top layer kind of comes out. Let's do that for the sake of easy. Yep, all right, this is, the, uh, this is the part of the case that the games were in. Ooh, looks like we have um, a cloth map. I love when they do this. Uh, Resident Evil 2 and 3 had maps of the Raccoon City Police Station as well as Raccoon City itself, respectively. They were really nice. Ooh, this is real cool. So. Yeah, it looks like we have a map of the area of the game that you'll be playing through. Uh, wow, this is like a really nice material. Um, looking at this, it looks like it's a map with their umbrella logo at the top. You know, this, this feels nice. I mean, it's small, it's not much, but it's a good material. And on the back is this beautiful like image of a logo of the game in the title. That's, that's really nice. Like I, this may be hung up. Um, yeah, and oh, look at that, there seems to be some writing on the bottom. It's actually illegible. You can't actually read that bottom left uh, under the village, but it looks nice. So maybe this is like the map in the game that you get. That would be awesome. But yeah, this is like, I wouldn't say silk, but pretty close to it. So it's not cheap. It feels like you don't want to play around with it too much. I'm gonna have a lot of fun getting this back in the plastic later. I hate doing that. But for this video, I will show you. And you kind of raise up this part off this piece of cardboard here and you get this rather large, I'm gonna say art book. I'm gonna take a peek. If I see spoilers, I'm closing the book, but if it's just, uh, if there's no spoilers, I'll, I'll show a page. All right, Resident Evil art book, Vi Resident Evil Village art book. This art book contains designs and information that can be seen throughout Resident Evil Village. We recommend playing through the game first to avoid spoilers. That's what I'm gonna do. Thank you Capcom for putting that right in the front of the book. I am not gonna flip through this. I'm not gonna show it to the camera because hey, this is the first day the game is out. I doubt that you've played it unless you stayed up all through midnight last night to go through it. And uh, I just wanna show that this is a big, mm, large in size, not the thickest book, but it's a nice art book uh, from the game. And I'm not gonna open and take a look at it just yet. Maybe I'll come back and, uh, when I'm done with the game and share my thoughts on it and I'll share the images inside. But yeah, you get that nice sized art book with it. Well, let's continue on to the meat of this, shall we? Oops. Oops, don't want to drop anything. All right, and just like with the Resident Evil 2 and 3 Collector's Edition, we get a figure, and it is of one of my favorite Resident Evil characters, who I really hope hasn't turned to the dark side permanently, and that is a, we got a figure of one Mr. Chris Redfield. Yes, and here's the box that he is in. Uh, very plain black box, which just kind of is a visage on the front. Um, just says Resident Evil Village on the top, and... Uh, instructions on the bottom, but who needs instructions? Let's open this bad boy up. This is gonna go on display next to Jill and uh, Leon, the second I can find space from. Really hope they release something with Claire eventually so you can have kind of the core four Resident Evil characters. So I've kind of mentioned, like it would be great to have a game, like Six had a lot of characters, but it didn't have everybody. It didn't have like the core four, who I consider to be Jill, Chris, Leon, and Claire all together. In fact, I don't think Jill Valentine, as I've mentioned in a prior video, has ever met Leon S. Kennedy. I think they're like the two icons of the series. They've never actually been in a game together. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I would love to see a Jill and Leon game. 
but more than anything, a quarter four game. All right, so that, that came out of the plastic or the uh, cardboard pretty easily. Ooh, this is kind of a cob looking. He just kind of looks like he's in a clear casket. But uh, let's open him up, see? All right, I don't see any, I'm checking for tape, so I don't just break the plastic as I pull it apart. Oh, there is some tape. So we will take just scotch tape, a little box cutter action here. God, you know, I love, you know, hang me if you must, but I love Resident Evil 5, Chris, like big muscular Chris. Like I played that game for so many hours in co-op and I've always been very partial to that design. So he kind of slimmed down and especially RE7, I wasn't a big fan of that design. I'm glad to see he's put some bulk back on in his later years in the RE8. Um, so I, I, from what I've seen from the trailers, I like Chris's design in this. So let's see if I like this figure enough to display him prominently with Jill and Leon. All right, some protective plastic on him, as you can see. All right, the bottom opens right up, and ooh. <laughs> and there he is. There is one Mr. Chris Redfield, the OG of the Resident Evil series, the man on the box of the very first game in the US, yes. And uh, I gotta say, let's get a good look at this facial sculpt. Uh, he looks like he's seen better days. Uh, he's kind of got a, a, a mix between uh, like a Vietnam vet stare and like kind of a drunken stupor. But I got to say, like, it's grown on me as I look at it because the facial sculpt is, and I'll bring it closer to the camera, looks pretty good. The coat feels nice. It's kind of charcoal-y feeling. Uh, and yeah, he's even got treads on the bottom of his sneakers. That's kind of interesting that he's wearing sneakers and not like boots or something. Maybe they're boots, but you can't see. But yeah, let's get a good, I'll bring him nice and close for you to see uh, that handsome grill of his. But like I, could say, like I said, it's a, it's a nice sculpt. Like there's some detail. I'll show you the, the hair, the, uh, the back of the jacket, uh, you know, just, it's not bad. It's a decent size. You can see the, the tread on the bottom of his sneakers. And how tall is this boy? I have, well, let's measure him with the base in a little bit. I believe I have a tape measure hidden here somewhere, but yeah. Not a bad sized figure. It's a good way to it. It's not cheap. It's not hollow. That's for sure. So let's place him right here for now as I get the base out, which is... Oh, and he's also got his weapon right here. We'll uh, put that in when we correct the base. And... By the way, as I'm doing this, I want to know, you guys, <laughs> what are your thoughts on Resident Evil? Is this your first one? Uh, what's your favorite? When did you start with the franchise? What would you like to see next? What's your favorite type? Is it... The tank controlled ones, is it the first person ones, is it the third person over the shoulder ones? Me, I love them all, but let's see. It's, you know, I hate to be like, you know, the majority, but it's, it's, it's probably four, but it, seven came real close. Not as like a, in the gaming department, because you know, it, it's not a mechanically deep game, but just in the vibe of seven, like they kept the, the rap, the, uh, they kept seven, what it was about, under wraps for so long, and so well. That game was like a mystery. I was very unsure about it. Remember, after 2012, after RE6, which I'm not a huge fan of, um, RE was kind of in a bad place, and seven really shocked people and kind of revitalized this series. Just, it was creepy, it was fun, I, I liked going in blind, not knowing anything about it, and yeah, what a... Well, what are your thoughts? What are, what are, what's your favorite? Oh man, look at this. This base might be better than the figure itself. It took me a minute to realize it. it's a wolf's head. Yeah, so, you know, for those who don't know, werewolves are gonna play some type of role in this game. And uh, yeah, right on the base they show. That is, that's like a cool tattoo idea. It's like, look at a scarred werewolf. You know, I, I'm, I have like, it's like if the Game of Thrones logo fused with Super Eye Patch Wolf's logo, you would get something like this. And yeah, let's, let's get, oh, and uh, just, wow. Just in the same font and style as the statues of um, Jill Valentine and Leon from Resident Evil 2 and 3 Collection Edition, he has his name right up front. So yeah, this, this is to scale with them. In fact, I'm gonna grab those figures in a moment and um, I'll put them all together or I'll, I'll do that in the following video when I do my thoughts on the game rather. And uh, you get an idea, but let's let's put Chris on this base. Let's see how difficult this is. You know what? Before I do that, let's put his sidearm on. Yeah, his weapon. By the way, if you want to take a close look, it looks like a silenced pistol right there with a scope on, a laser pointer on it. Because this is Resident Evil. Every handgun has a red laser pointer. Let's see if it's easy to get it into his hands. And let's see. But yeah, all right. This is always the uh, fun part of any figure is getting those. Uh, uh, he's got a tight grip and his hand is closed. So you kind of got to squeeze into the top of his hand. All right, that wasn't too bad. Let's see how his feet go in. 
Oh yeah. All right, that's one foot. You kind of gotta give them a little stretch. It's like a PVC, it's like a hard soft plastic. So it's not gonna break too easily. So you don't have to worry about like too much about breaking it, but let's get them in there. So now we nice and solid so we don't have to worry about it. And yeah, hope Chris, uh, I'd really hate to see this be Chris's turn, turn to the dark side permanently. Uh, somehow I doubt it. I mean, when you think about it, Chris and Jill particularly have been the main protagonist in the, the series since 1996. It's been one continuous story. There's not too many continuous stories running since 1996. Think about that. Like Final Fantasy and other series that have been going on that long, they're, they're, they're in anthology. They're different. Like the only ones I could think off the top of my head were like Metal Gear Solid running from like 87, but that ended. Um, you know, there's the Yeez games. Um, Wise, if however you want to say Yeez. But yeah, Resident Evil is one of the few games that's had one story for 25 years. That is pretty impressive. And you really got to, I want Chris at the bottom of these pegs, you really kind of got to force them, but that's what we got to do. And yeah, I think he's on there pretty good. What do you say? Yeah, pretty. he's, he's in there good. He's not falling. And there he is. Chris Redfield, fully armed on his base. Let's get this plastic out of the way so you can really get a good look at him. And how tall is he at the end of the day? Let me get my tape measure here, put that under the base, and boop, boop. we're at, if you want to see yourself, at about uh, 13 inches, just about, so maybe, yeah, almost exactly one foot, one inch, or 13 inches, or 33 centimeters for my uh, my friends overseas, but yeah, it's a good-sized figure, should line up well with Chris and Jill, and it is a wonderful looking figure. I am really impressed with the base and the build quality, it's really growing on me, so yeah, that's it, guys. That's everything that came with the Resident Evil 8 Collector's Edition. So just to uh, kind of show it off, of course, it came in the big, beautiful box over there. But it came with the figure, the lovely map that you see here. I'll throw that down. It came with the lovely Steelbook and original game. And by the way, let's open up this game while we're at it. See if there's any, see what the inside and the disc looks like. Get to see a live uh, unboxing of... The disc. I cannot wait to play this. This is this is my weekend right here, ladies and gentlemen. So, what do we get? Ooh, okay. So we got some. We did get some goodies on the inside. What do we get? So obviously uh, the disc. No manual. God, I miss manuals. But you know they're never coming back. Save paper, sure. But uh, it came with these two cards with uh, the trauma pack. Let's see. What does that include? Well, it doesn't say. I'm gonna find out what the trauma pack is and. Uh, <laughs> uh, a code for Resident Evil Reverse. Uh, I think I'm going to skip that one. I've said it before. I have absolutely no interest in competitive online Resident Evil. I didn't play Resistance, and I never played Umbrella Corps or um, Operation Raccoon City for ex any extended periods of time. They're fine. If they're your thing, that's cool. I mean, Resistance has some... Temptation that you can be like Mr. X versus Nemesis like in a game like that's pretty sick But I don't know. I'm not too interested in that I am gonna play the hell out of the mercenaries in this because my favorite Resident Evil multiplayer mode ever One of my favorite multiplayer games ever Jet in general is Resident Evil 5 mercenaries mode 6 is fine and 4 is amazing, but it's only solo but 5 uh, Mercenaries is my favorite. I hope this even comes close to that. I know it's not co-op at the moment, but yeah, so you get the code for the trauma pack and reverse in there and that just about wraps up the collector's edition of Resident Evil 8 Village. And I gotta say, I cannot wait to play this. Um, I'm, I've tried to stay in the dark on this game as much as possible. Yes, I've watched uh, the trailers that they've shown, but I have not done any like, uh, gotten in any threads looking for spoilers or theory videos or anything like that. I just want Whatever Capcom wants us to see, that's what I've seen. I, I'm a sucker, like, because Resident Evil 7's market, marketing campaign was so good and kind of tricking you into what that game was going to be. And if you haven't played it, please go back and play it. That game is fantastic. Um, and 8 looks to be a direct sequel to that, so you're probably going to want to play that game before you play this. But I'll be back with another video talking uh, and sharing my thoughts on this game. And I'll show off Chris with Jim and Leon and see if he, his game stacks up to theirs. 
And yeah, um, thank you for joining me today. I just, I could spiel all day about Resident Evil. I'll probably do a whole video on my thoughts and feelings and favorite things about Resident Evil, but that's gonna do it for today. Um, if you like what you've seen here today, like I said, please check out my other Resident Evil videos. I'm going to take a guess and say that you're also uh, a pretty hardcore gamer. If you uh, are watching this video, please check my uh, videos where I go over rare, weird, uh, and expensive games on consoles such as the PS2, the uh, Xbox, the GameCube, the Wii. Name your console. I probably have a video on it, and there's probably a chance that I have a Resident Evil or Capcom game on there that's worth your time and attention. My name is Mike. This has been Chip Damage. Please enjoy Resident Evil 8 and take care of yourselves.